Welcome to North Carolina Weekend, I'm Deborah Holt Noel. Back in 1970, a group of developers decided to create a theme park on Beach Mountain based on the popular film, The Wizard of Oz. Well, things started out great, but by 1980, the park had really started to diminish. Flash forward to today, and the Land of Oz is back during the summer and is still a fun, quirky place to visit. It was a place people could go to escape reality. When the Land of Oz opened on Beach Mountain in 1970, newspapers called it the top attraction in the southeast. The balloon ride wasn't even open yet, and they had been named the number one tourist attraction literally the next day by the Washington Post. The park had the makings of a great permanent staple in North Carolina. They originally leased the land for 40 years, so they thought this was going to be ongoing for as long as they could run it. Turns out, it would be a short run for the park that seemed doomed before it opened. Brothers Harry and Grover Robbins were developers for Carolina Caribbean Corporation. They were looking for a way to turn Beach Mountain into a year-round attraction. In 1965, they hired Charlotte designer Jack Pintez to see what they could do with the land on the mountain. When he got up here, he said the trees reminded him from the trees from the Wizard of Oz. So from that moment on, that's, that's all it was. It was Oz from that very moment. It took two years and 44,000 glazed yellow bricks to build the park. But just a few months before opening, something went wrong. And Grover unfortunately passed away from illness in March of 1970, right before they opened. They opened on June 15, 1970, to all the expected fanfare. But five years later, Carolina Caribbean was bankrupt, and a fire destroyed the Emerald City. After the fire hit, Carolina Caribbean let go of Oz, and then another company, Tri-South, came in and took over management of it. The attention to detail, from what I have been told, was lost. People who work there still loved it to begin with, but there is a very clear divide between 1975 and 1976 in terms of the quality of the experience. By the end, the soundtrack recordings were breaking down in the middle of performances, things were falling apart, and Jack actually came back in to see how much, it, like what to do to reopen the park and renovate it and do everything, and the sum of money was too large for them to want to invest into it, so they just decided to uh, close the park altogether. When the gates closed in 1980, Oz was left to its own devices, enduring harsh winters, decay, and looters. It was up here, people vandalized it, they broke in, they did whatever they could. While the park stopped operating, the hype behind the attraction never died. So new managers began reopening Oz for special events, hopeful to one day restore it to its short-lived glory days. Oh no, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Now, go fly, fly!